Julie Kelly, who is a fabulous and real reporter and a lawyer, has been tracking the destruction of our legal system in and around Washington, D.C., and has written a fantastic piece. I believe that's her own website, which we will promote, Mr. Producer. Let's go ahead and link to it. Now, Julie Kelly, um, Donald Trump is having to face issues of first impression as a result of the Department of Justice and Jack Kelly bringing these phony four counts against him in Washington, D.C. Every motion that they have filed, he has either lost or lost in a significant way with a little piece, a couple of crumbs thrown to him. He was denied attorney-client privilege. This gag order goes beyond beyond anything that's imaginable. Uh, with a little bit of light, he's actually allowed to attack the prosecutor. Uh, it's being brought before the Tuesday, Super Tuesday, in a five-month period. A Sixth Amendment that's being violated. Fifth Amendment with due process. First Amendment on free speech. And I can go on and on and on, and you know better than anybody. And so something happened Today and in the last 24 hours, can you tell us what's going on and what just happened? Sure, Mark. Thanks for having me on. So this is remarkable because, Mark, what it does is completely contradict what Judge Tanya Chutkin, appointed by Obama, and Special Counsel Jack Smith, appointed by Merrick Garland, have argued for since He indicted Donald Trump for January 6th. This was back in August. And that is that Donald Trump will be treated like any other criminal defendant. No one is above the rule of law. He's not going to be treated with kid gloves because he was president or he's running for president. Well, what Jack Smith did today, taking this highly, he even called it, Mark, in his motion, an exceptional step of bypassing the appellate court who is going to hear the argument, Trump's appeal of Judge Chutkin's other order um, that basically removes and says that the, he is entitled to no presidential immunity, that a president is, is subject to criminal indictment and prosecution. So Trump appealed that. And rather than let it play out in the normal course, Jack Smith today took the rare step. I think it's only happened a few dozen times in in the past few decades of asking the Supreme Court to weigh in on Trump's appeal, bypassing the D.C. Circuit, the appellate court, and taking it directly to the Supreme Court. And they ruled, yes, he can do that, as you point out. This concerns me a great deal for several reasons. Number one, why would the court do this unless it's going to rule the wrong way? I'm very concerned about John Roberts, mm-hmm. Brent Kavanaugh, Barrett. Mm-hmm. They have been very weak on very important issues. They were very weak on litigation in Pennsylvania during the course of the election. That they raised serious constitutional issues about the power of a legislature. Three justices wanted to go for it. They couldn't get a fourth. That means the other three so-called Republicans wouldn't go for it. Why would they accept the case like this? If they well, don't believe they that, today, that, that, hold on, if they don't believe it should be resolved before the election, go right ahead. I'm sorry. So what the Supreme Court did within a matter of hours is they told Donald Trump's team that they need to reply to Smith. This is his um, petition for writ of cert. So it, they haven't necessarily accepted the review, ah, they're okay. just telling Donald Trump by next week, you need to file a response to Jack Smith asking for this um, cert, this writ of cert, cert petition that would eventually fast track it. So they didn't necessarily accept it. But to Good. your point, if they did take this step, what what is that signaling? Mm-hmm. So that's an excellent point you make. So we don't know what they're going to do yet. I am surprised that they asked for response this quickly. But let's talk about this issue. Immunity of a president. If a president has immunity as president from charges, even bogus charges, but let's just say whatever they are, charges, then he ceases to be president. Most of the statute of limitations on so-called crimes are five years. Not all, most. And so let's say he serves one term. 
Then the opposing party or the opposing administration, that is the president who defeats him, the attorney general he appoints, the special counsel that they report, appoint, can go back and look at the things he did as president. I'm talking about the precedent that this will set and make a decision on whether or not they should bootstrap it into a post-presidency and then say, oh, well, you're not president anymore. You're not immune from it. Wouldn't that do severe, I mean, severe damage to the presidency? To the presidency, yes, and to the country as we continue this descent into banana republic style territory. This is where we're headed, and this has been the trajectory. And what Jack Smith just did today was act as an accelerant to where we're headed. And unfortunately, let's revisit again what the Supreme Court did. Why would they even consent to this this quickly? I agree. Why would they signal at all that they are going to? Uh, indulge Jack Smith and Judge Chutkin because they are the ones, Mark, as we've talked about, they fast track the trial. Instead of the typical 14, 18, there's defendants who are still waiting to go to trial from January 6th. Some waited over two years between indictment and trial. She fast tracked this a seven month window, knowing all of this litigation would need to be resolved beforehand. They set this up to continue to heighten the destruction of the legal, judicial, and political system in this country before the election. These are sick, dangerous people. And today, once again, proved how dangerous Jack Smith is. And the fact that no one has reined him in, has cut his budget by a penny, speaks again to the weakness of Republican leadership in Washington. Certainly in the Senate, they won't agree to anything. I mean, Mitch McConnell backs anything pretty much that Schumer wants to do. Uh, mm-hmm. But this, this said, this is important. We really need to put a fine point on this. What is the hurry in getting this case to trial other than the Biden Department of Justice, Jack Smith's obsession, and Judge Chunkin's political bias? There's no emergency. There's not going to be any issues about um, any lapsing of statute. Uh, All the witnesses, such as they are, have already provided enormous amounts of information. Uh, These charges against Donald Trump, the Klan Act, the two Enron Acts, as you've pointed out, which are being challenged by other defendants, and of course the Federal uh, Contractor Act, have absolutely nothing to do with January 6th. So he's trying to bootstrap that in. Judge Chunkin jumps the judge in Florida to get her case out before the other mm-hmm. case, which, which Smith brought first, she calls the judge in New York and says, hey, you're supposed to go first. Can you wait till I'm done? He says, of course. He's a Democrat hack. Attorney-client privilege is stripped from Trump. You go down the line, down, and this is what they're willing to consider. You're 100% right. They shouldn't even be asking Trump's lawyers for a response by next week because that's a fast track. But fundamentally, the idea... And this chunk and her rhetoric and her decisions, it's highly charged, gaslighting, political rhetoric. She doesn't just rule. She insists on being a host on MSNBC. And by the way, Julie Kelly, what Jack Smith wrote, because I read it, was highly political, well overstated what what we're talking about here. Uh, And... To do all of this and for these courts to go along with it, and you hope that the Supreme Court is the place that's going to put an end to this, I fear it's not. I fear they're going to buckle. I fear that they're so frightened after the Dobbs decision that they want to show that they're really going to stand up. And they they listen to the Michael Ludigs of the world. They listen to these other former judges. They watch these legal analysts on TV. I am very, very concerned about it. You? Very. And I'll tell you something even more infuriating. What happened this morning, and I was waiting for an order related to cert, uh, granting cert in the 1512 C2 case that is before the Supreme Court. You've got January Remind everybody what that is. This is obstruction of an official proceeding, the post Enron law that you just alluded to. More than 300 January 6 defendants have been charged with this. It's, it represents two out of four counts in Jack Smith's criminal indictment. And so we were waiting today to find out if the Supreme Court would accept this petition and review this 
splintered. It basically was three different opinions in a three judge uh, panel. Incomprehensible. Ruling. Yes. Barely. And they kicked the can today to after the first of the year. They relisted it, Mark, so they didn't have to make a decision to grant cert or deny it. So now this key two, 1512, one is 1512K, 1512C2 in Smith's indictment, the Supreme Court kicked that down the, down the road. A, a crucial issue the J6 defendants have been waiting for some Supreme Court resolution on, but yet they return in a matter of a few hours to tell Trump's team, you have till next week to respond to this rare uh, petition by Jack Smith seeking an expedited resolution at, at the Supreme Court. I mean, wh- what's, what is this? I'll tell you what it is, Julie Kelly. I knew John Roberts before he went on the court. Not We weren't buddies. We were both in the Reagan administration. He's political. He's highly influenced by the media, especially the New York Times. His wife is dear friends with the wife of Thomas Friedman. He is a uh, sort of a DC, that whole genre of, of socialites and so forth and so on. He's in that crowd. And uh, <clears throat> I think Barrett's been an enormous disappointment. Basically, she's been taken under the chief's wing. I think Brent Kavanaugh is all show, no substance when it comes to standing up these issues. I'm quite serious about this. I think you have three justices who understand what the Constitution's really intended to do. There's no need for this rush, except you're right. These two charges, these Enron charges, they're not even relevant to what took place. The obstruction definition in these sections don't even meet the obstruction that, they're, that, that, that Smith is arguing for. It's much like his recent filings where he's laying out facts that he's going to bring in the trial, which are basically facts you would use if you're trying to charge somebody with uh, insurrection or seditious conspiracy. So he's trying to drag that through the back door while he brings these four phony charges because he doesn't have the elements of insurrection or, or a seditious conspiracy. So he wants to use them. In these other charges, this is so completely unethical. This is the Jack Smith the Supreme Court should know. The Supreme Court has had to deal with Jack Smith before in an 8-0 to zero decision. And yet some of the members have changed. So who the hell knows if they're serious about it, right? I, I just don't know how they would get away with I mean, I know how they would get away with it today. But to your point, Jack Smith's record... He has a lousy prosecution record. He was completely up, upended by the Supreme Court in the Bob McDonald um, overturning his conviction of Bob McDonald. Then he had hung jury on his prosecution of John Edwards. Uh, you know, then they shuttled him off to The Hague, where he indicted the former um, president of Serbia. They were trying to reach a long term plea, uh, peace agreement and he indicts him. Then comes over here. He used to run the public integrity unit under DOJ under Obama. He let all the Biden crime family. It was happening right under his nose between 2010 and 2015. He completely ignores that. So the guy is a, is a known loser. Why would the Supreme Court today give any validation to what he clearly is trying to do? And that is to stick with this March 4th trial date that he and Judge Chutkin were in cahoots set it's amazing i mean and 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 jack smith with chunkin created the this entire schedule they created this entire these entire issues these issues of first impression these constitutional issues that are very significant particularly if the court rules improperly and there's an assumption in his filing today that trump has in fact committed crimes And therefore, Trump Mm -hmm. should not benefit for those crimes by claiming immunity for life. He's not claiming immunity for life. Jack Smith has picked something in order to bring bogus charges based on issues that were related to his presidency when he was president. That doesn't mean you're immune for all purposes and all things. It means you're immune from his charges, which are bogus to begin with. And the other thing is, as Jim Trustee and you and I know, and he pointed out on my show the other night, the Speedy Trial Act is for the defendant, not the government. What is the rush here? 
other than you want to influence the election. Can you think of another reason other than them trying to influence the election? There is not. Well, to get him in handcuffs, as you know, to to gratify this bloodlust that the left has had for nearly a decade to see Donald Trump behind bars and Jack Smith and Judge Chutkin are are in on it. But this is what this is another thing that Jack Smith and Judge Chutkin have created, that, that the public is an interested party in the trial proceedings and a speedy trial. Jack Smith said this repeatedly in his petition today that there's great public interest in moving forward with this trial. Public interest where? MSNBC viewers? I mean, prove your, show your work. And he, first of all, the public is split. And since when does he speak for the public? What does he know about the public? The public is an interested party. Isn't the job here to do justice, Julie Kelly? Isn't that the point? The individual defendant in the courtroom. It's not about the public. It's not about politics. It's not about public opinion. In fact, doesn't that demonstrate what's going on here? That he's representing at least part of the public, he believes? That is the left and the Democrats and the Trump haters and the Biden administration? I mean, hasn't he really shown some ankle here that the Trump lawyers should seize on, in my view? I agree. And I'm I'm sure that they will do that. To the extent it matters, though, Mark, I'll tell you, and you know, after covering these hearings, and trials for the past few years. I am never, I never walk out of one of these courtrooms, whether it's a Trump judge, an Obama judge, a Reagan judge, believe it or not. And I am fully Lambert. disgusted. Lambert, fully disgusted. Julie Kelly, these courts, this Justice Department, this special prosecutor, they've already made unprecedented. Uh, acts have taken unprecedented acts and created precedent through them that are going to damage this republic for however long it survives. And they just keep notching it up again and again and again. And now they reach into the Constitution, separation of powers, the power of the presidency, changing criminal law, creating cases of first impression, using creativity in order to bring certain charges and so forth. You don't do that with a former president who's running for president. You don't do that to the Constitution. But because this is all Democrats all the time, they just don't give a damn. There is literally, and I can't think of one, no reason for the Supreme Court to bypass the regular appellate system, by by the way, the D.C. court's loaded with Obama and Biden Democrats anyway, to bypass it to accommodate a prosecutor and the Department of Justice, because that in and of itself is injustice to, to change processes to accommodate a prosecutor like this. I have never seen or heard of anything like this. Nobody has, have they? No. Don't think anything like this has ever happened. And I think that's what's so shocking about the Supreme Court's quick response, especially in light of kicking down the road, the the crucial 1512C2 case that, that criminalizes political dissent. This is what they're doing. This is the totality of the entire January 6th prosecution, whether it's Donald Trump, his associates, or a grandma from Florida. This is to criminalize political dissent. It is to create an entire category of domestic terrorists. This is why you have judges like Tim Kelly and Amit Mehta, who have now created new federal crimes of terrorism, including shaking a temporary fence or obstruction of an official proceeding. They've now put their judicial imprimatur on a list of domestic terror crimes that we never would have conceived would have happened, you know, after the first war on terror. Now being aimed at Americans from the former president to presumptive presidential nominee to children as young as young adults, 18, 19 years old, who have had their lives destroyed over this or 65. They just arrested a 65 year old woman from Texas last week, Mark, and charged her for January 6th. This is a God. campaign of terror unleashed by this DOJ with Jack Smith now 
at the helm. You know, I wrote a book called Men in Black. It was my first book on the Supreme Court and its tyrannical decisions. And I would just say to the current Supreme Court justices, if any of them are listening, you are, are flirting with a legacy of certain past courts that have done enormous damage to this country, whether it's the Dred Scott decision, the Plessy versus Ferguson decision, the Korematsu decision, and other decisions. They involved race, of course, but they involved more than that. They involved unconstitutional acts. And the Supreme Court was on the wrong side of every one of those decisions. And I'm just saying now, for this court to refuse to take up this crucially important constitutional case that came out of Pennsylvania, which three of the justices wanted to, but they couldn't get a fourth. And this was an important case. It wasn't about ballots. It wasn't about voting machines. It was about who gets to make the law under the Constitution. They wouldn't take it because they didn't want to involve themselves in politics. And so now, you're right. Even by saying to the Trump lawyers, we need an immediate response next week. That means at least some of the justices may well want to hear this case. If not for them, and that would tip the balance. And so they would be playing into these efforts of this administration trying to take on what might be a prior administration of interfering in an election. The only reason to move this fast is to accommodate the prosecutor who does not believe in due process, who does not believe in free speech, and a judge, the most radical judge in the federal judiciary, who makes these outrageous statements from the bench and then refuses to recuse herself like she's God's gift and rules time and time again on motions for the government. And same with the prior judge, the motions judge, stripping Donald Trump of attorney-client privilege. Is the Supreme Court really going to drag itself at the behest of a prosecutor to move fast to accommodate him? Do they understand that the American people, Julie Kelly, not just the radical left kooks, but that millions and millions of Americans who may not pay attention to the court will turn on them because they will recognize how political and expedient this is. Do they not recognize that, Julie Kelly? I have to assume that probably a majority of them do not. Or they don't care because they're insulated in this bubble of Washington, D.C., where they're all in cahoots, all of them. I really do fear, I, I really do fear if they go down this road and allow this prosecutor to push them down this road, or actually follow them down the road, allow this radical judge to do the same, that, that they break precedent and take up this case. And if they rule in favor of the prosecution, this country, this country will never be the same. The court will never be the same. It'll have no respect from tens of millions of Americans. It's the justices in the courts that stand up to tyranny, that stand up to the government, that are remembered. That are remembered. It's not the New York Times or the Washington Post or somebody else that's going to determine the legacy of this court. The legacy of this court, I mean, just think about it, Julie Kelly. 30 years from now, a case is written about out of the Supreme Court where they... But the prosecutor says, I'm going to jump the appellate court. And the court says, if they do, okay, we'll take it. The court says, we'll take it. And that upholds this decision by Judge Chunkin. Which is, just because you're a president doesn't mean these protections follow you. They will open the door to future presidents being charged with crimes once they leave office. That a future administration of the opposite party will sit there. They'll wait till that president leaves office. And then they'll charge him. And they're going to fall on that sword, Julie Kelly, particularly when you consider the four charges in this case. 
having nothing to do. Jack Kelly argues insurrection. Jack Kelly argues, argues about uh, these, these cases, these matters, these charges he won't bring. Seditious conspiracy. But he argues seditious conspiracy without using the phrase. He argues insurrection without using the phrase. He accuses Donald Trump of creating a violence. He had to know, creating a, he had to know that his actions and statements would create violence. I mean, after all, we're taking texts off his phone and we're hearing all this other stuff. And, but he's not charged with anything creating violence. And the Supreme Court, as you point out, would it dare give its imprimatur to this? I fear, I worry that it's caught up in the politics of the moment, which is, which is the politics pushed by the left through the media. I worry about it. Any final thoughts? No, I. It's this is depressing. Just one of those days, Mark. It, this is one of those days where you cover, and I woke up with some hope that they were going to accept this fifteen twelve cert, and then you end up with this and and it's hard to not believe that this is calculated and orchestrated it's hard to believe that the supreme court did not kick the 1512 issue down the road but that knew that this was coming and immediately picked this up in a You're political right. maneuver on both matters mark mm-hmm. on both matters that puts a pit in, in my stomach because the only hope these january 6 defendants have ever had is that when some of these appeals finally got to the Supreme Court, they would at least be given a fair hearing that they were denied in Washington, D.C. And this hurts me because I know how much it hurts these defendants who are waiting for some relief. And today just was a very disheartening indicator. And the court said we have more important things to do and pushed it off. That's right. Oh, and by the way, One of those more important things we have to do is take up Jack Smith's ridiculous motion to jump over the circuit court, which we almost never do, and to rule in favor of what he's claiming, which is a former president has no immunity from his actions as president. He doesn't have any rights. He's committed these crimes as president. Then he expects to get away with it. He didn't commit any crimes. He's not convicted of committing any crimes. And these four ridiculous charges, you know, when those charges were first brought, Julie Kelly, almost every objective, legitimate lawyer and constitutional said, this is ridiculous. They're dusting off the Klan Act. They're dusting off the two Enron obstruction uh, uh, sections. They're dusting off a federal contractor law. What the hell is that? And then he pours into this and he's made it clear to the whole world that he's going to convince this jury of Democrats. It's going to get them all worked up politically, get them all passionate and emotional about what happened on January 6th, even though he's not charged about what happened on January 6th. This is about as sick as it gets. Julie Kelly, keep at it. If people want to read you, and where do they go? I work on this from the beginning. Um, my Substack Declassified with Julie Kelly, I've got a lot of coverage there and then of course i post a lot of breaking news on twitter slash x julie underscore kelly too all right let's make sure we have on our social sites the first site where people can go to keep up with julie kelly mr producer god bless you my friend keep up the great work you too mark thanks so much 